Hey everyone, welcome back to House Mustang Garage. Um, today, uh, I think we're gonna be installing the 289 that we just rebuilt uh, back into the car. Um, finally to that point here, I got the engine off the stand, on the cherry picker, ready to go. Um, as far as preparation goes to get your engine in, uh, we have our separator plate, we have our uh, new flex plate that our crankshaft was balanced to. Um, don't forget to you know sign and date it. And um, one thing I'll kind of point out is on these flex plate bolts or flywheel bolts, if you have a manual, is um, you want to put Loctite on these bolts because um, the holes on the 289s, they actually kind of uh, go all the way into the crankcase. So you want to make sure those are like Loctited so that you don't get like uh, any kind of oil seepage through there. So. Um, so that's on there and torqued and then as far as inside of here, uh, we have an automatic transmission C4 auto um, I just like to make sure that the torque converter didn't like fall out partially during the removal process So I like to kind of just make sure that my torque converter is you know set in place and you can kind of just Verify that like the studs are like all the way into the bell housing and um, Usually you can't get your hands, you know or fingers back there um, another thing I do is I kind of place the studs because Ford loves to use their studs. Um, I like to place one down. That way it's like easier to line that up with your uh, flex plate um, in order to get these two together. All right, if you hadn't had a chance yet, um, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It does help us to uh, make more videos, uh, which is helpful for you guys, hopefully. Um, if you find the video helpful or, or fun or anything like that, just go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Those little things kind of go a long ways. Uh, in order to help us make more videos so um, I'm not gonna film like how to install your engine um, we're just gonna throw it in and you know those those two little things I kind of like to talk about checking your torque converter like line your torque converter up and then getting your flex plate on and then of course you want to align your flex plate so you have a hole pointed down on the stud so that way it just kind of goes in nice and um, we're gonna time lapse this and kind of Make it a little fun and then um, at the end of the video stick around um, we're gonna fire this engine up for the first time and um, hopefully all goes well So we have the engine back in. We got all the little things going on this. Um, spark plugs are all in, headers are all in, radiator, battery, carburetor, fuel line. Everything is back on. We uh, at the same time upgrade to a Borgensen power steering unit. So this car is ready to start. Um, finally, we're at starting the engine for the first time, the engine rebuild. So. Um, some things that I like to do before we start is I really like to have a 
oil pressure gauge on the engine so I can read the actual number. Um, even though I tested it like before I installed the engine, um, I like to have this running during the break-in process. Um, I got my funnel buddy on the radiator. I got oil in the engine. Um, I also like to have my vacuum gauge on here as well. So I can read my engine vacuum and make adjustments to the carburetor if necessary. And yeah, so those are the kind of little things I like to do before we start the engine. Okay, another thing to kind of touch on when you're starting this for the very first time, um, you want the RPMs to be raised. And you're gonna run that for like at least 30 minutes with a raised RPM. Um, about 2000 to 2500 is good because um, you're breaking in your camshaft. We have a flat tappet cam. We want to raise the RPMs and get oil throughout the entire engine and get everything circulating and going. And that's the cam break-in procedure. Um, after that, we're going to dump that oil out and get some, some new fresh break-in oil in. And um, that's kind of the process that we're trying to do here. So we're going to you know, fire it up and um, get the RPMs up and let it run. Okay. Wait. Yep. Carburetor is now getting fuel. Okay. Okay, go ahead. We got a spark. Do it again. Okay, I'm ready. most important thing that you kind of need to know about you know firing up a uh, fresh rebuild with a flat tap at cam is you gotta get your you gotta raise your rpms up a little bit um you gotta get your make sure your timing set as you saw earlier i had like my oil pressure gauge on it, i had my vacuum gauge on it, i had my timing light on it all those things i'm i'm watching and monitoring uh to make sure that everything's going to be good um i like to have a you know about a half hour of run time um, at above 2,000 RPMs on a fresh rebuild, especially with the flat tappet camshaft. After that, I dump that oil out, change it, change the filter, everything like that, and then we're good. So I skipped over all that, but um, we're back now. I've tuned everything. Um, I even put an upgraded distributor in there, uh, some electronic stuff, and changed the oil. And now this engine's good. So why don't we start this up, see how she sounds, and um, last thing we gotta do is just drive her. Okay, let's go ahead and fire this up. <laughs> Give her one pump of the gas, it should fire up.
Is it cool? Hell yeah, it's cool. Hell yeah, it's cool. <laughs>